Oh wow, oh, I'm loving this color for our video today. <laughs> Sorry, I'm already getting sidetracked. <laughs> anyway, one month ago I talked about how to avoid new growths on our orchids from failing by providing a healthy dose of calcium nitrate the moment the eyes swell or the growth is clearly on the move. Four weeks later, a quick update of what I did and why and what I would like to do today, but can't because... <laughs> we'll get to that. Welcome on this beautiful sunny day in southern Spain. Oh my goodness, it feels like eons ago since I did the calcium nitrate video. A lot has happened in between then dark and cold and it was just a nightmare. So on a day like this, oh, oh yeah, anyway, let's get into it. Because, well, yeah, since the calcium nitrate video, I followed the advice from Michael McCarthy, who suggested that instead of calcium nitrate, it would benefit the orchid to get a very low dose of fertilizer mixed in with CalMag to encourage the growth with other nutrients. Well, I sort of followed it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I did not quite follow his suggestions to a T because in my calcium nitrate video, I mentioned that my next step would be a dose of CalMag with the intention of amping up the immobile nutrient of calcium, but now bringing in the magnesium because of the low light levels. Magnesium helps with photosynthesis and because I have to tiptoe around fertilizing and supplementing during my winters, many of my orchids show magnesium deficiency, which I struggle to correct during the growing season, thanks to the slow metabolism that our orchids have. Anyway, so my next calcium boost had magnesium in it. No seaweed, no fertilizer. <laughs> Sorry, Michael. <laughs> Normally I would add seaweed, but I did not want to boost any growths with growth hormones because my light and temperature levels were so low, I was very hesitant to add any kinds of nutrients into the mix. Fast forward to day 20, and I say that because I left the calcium nitrate in the reservoir for 10 days, then changed that out with 100 parts per million of CalMag, left that in the reservoir for 10 days, after which I changed that out and put 200 parts per million of fertilizer into the reservoir because now I am calculating the fact that while the days are dull, the sun is rising in the sky every day. It doesn't mean temperatures are warming up yet, but when they do, the days will be brighter and for longer. And we know what orchids do when they suddenly register that they have longer days and hopefully soon brighter days, which will raise the temperature by a couple of degrees as well, they respond with growth acceleration. Well, not exactly the right term for orchids, acceleration, <laughs> but it does fit when comparing to the slow or non-existent growth process during the shorter days. Anyway, so this was my calculation, the timing of the fertilizer. As mentioned, the metabolism of the orchid is slow. The light levels were not adequate neither were the temperatures, but we are four weeks out from day temperatures being in an acceptable range, even if it is overcast, and we are changing the clock again. Yay, summertime settings, woohoo, cartwheels around the patio. Anyway, I am adding fertilizer now so that the orchid absorbs the nutrients, and when the next four weeks are a thing of the past, the orchid has what it needs in its system to grow the growth without anything lacking in its system. That is the plan, but, and here we are 10 days after the nutrients went in and I am so desperately wanting to flush the pots as well as other pots and it is so very tempting to do a thorough flush today. The conditions are fabulous, but wait. Looking at the forecast, it would be the wrong time to flush. Just because it feels wonderful compared to the past weeks, doesn't mean it is the right thing to do. It could be very, very risky. In situations like mine, it is important to look at the forecast and plan ahead. 
It seems that as from fall, throughout winter and into early spring, I'm looking at the forecast and sometimes two or three times a day on two or three different devices, hoping I will get a different reading, but nope. The forecast is my go-to every single day, just in case, you know, forecasts aren't always accurate. But in the hopes that the forecast is reliable, let's just take the temperatures for a moment. Seeing as the past three weeks we've had our single digit night temperatures, cloudy days that did not warm up to generate warm counterbalance to the cold, I feel confident that the night temperatures until Tuesday are correct. And even if they're off by a degree higher, the flushing has to wait because now the forecast is showing rain, which inadvertently means overcast, no sunlight, colder pots, no counterbalance to warm up during the day, and that is not what I want the roots in semi-hydros to have to deal with for four full nights, if that makes sense. So here's a quick update on how the growths are faring after four weeks, and the progress is looking magnifique. Not quite chef's kiss, but there are some where I'm like going, mwah, chef's kiss. Not that I'm certain that we are going to have these growths bloom, but still they are progressing and that is all I can ask for at this moment in time. I comfort myself in the knowledge that even if a growth does not bloom, it's going to produce roots and with that, the orchid has another support system, which is also super important. My Catliantha white bridal is not progressing as quickly as I would like it to. It was a swelling nubbin when we saw it last. Now it has at least extended, but it is a small looking growth. Sometimes when new growths start, you can already tell that it has a different look about it from previous growths, but this one does not give me those vibes, and it may be another year before I get to see the blooms of the orchid, which was a wish list orchid of mine since I started building this collection, and it only arrived in my collection in 2022. Crazy. One of the first turns out to be one of the last. Anyway, Rhincodendrum cabalgata and verde is looking wonderful. I have to be super vigilant about the new growths on this orchid because she produces happy sap like there is no tomorrow. And we know what the combination of wet and cold can do to a growth. Well, so far we are still in business. Keeping my fingers well away from the area of the rim of the pot because now it is poking over the edge. Despite low light levels, in general, there is still one source of light that is brighter than the shadows this orchid lives in. So even though I have a repot planned for this orchid later in the season, light training is still in effect because of the creeping rhizome, and I would like to make sure that the growth habit stays within the perimeters of the pot once this growth matures. Moving on to my Catlia Durian Crucero do Sul is just wow this growth is taking off i am so happy to see this growth doing so well you can see the magnesium deficiency from yesteryear as mentioned it is difficult to correct but i'm so digging the look of this growth as with the white bridal being a little bit on the non-convincing side of size this is the look that i look to see where i know the growth will be of substance providing another great root system even if we do not get to see the magnificent blooms this year however there is still time i'm not going to say it won't bloom just yet under any other normal circumstances, this growth would have me going, yay! It has all the hallmarks of a blooming growth, but we are not out of the woods yet. Still, yay! It has all the hallmarks of being a great growth, with new roots and another support structure for what is a big orchid with high demands <coughs> by foliates, don't you know? <laughs> If you're already really, really excited to see these new growths progress and develop so well, please go hit that like button, please. I'll tell all the orchids that were featured in this video that you have liked the video, and I'm sure that'll also boost their motivation. Like, prove me wrong when I say I don't think the growth will bloom. Something like that. <laughs> so go ahead and like, please. And if you have not subscribed, well, follow the progress of these growths based on my calculations with regards to how I'm trying to tide them over until it really is their grow time. Thank you so much. And while we're at it, check out my wonderful Catlia Maxima starting another new growth on the second lead. While the growth that had to mature throughout the winter is growing roots, 
Wild thing, you make my heart sing. <laughs> you make everything groovy. <laughs> I love this orchid so much. Oh, and for non nascimento orchids and succulents, check out the Bratonia. Isn't this just fabulous? I have to be so careful to not put my thumb on the rim of this pot as well. These growths are starting to push faster than they did a couple of weeks ago. And well, it just goes to show that I hope to be proven right with my calculations as to when it is a good idea to add fertilizer and make sure that we are ready with all nutrients in the system when it is go time, when it is truly grow time. If you find yourself in a little bit of a dodgy situation like mine everything step by step in paces checking the forecast yes and just hoping the forecast is correct when it comes to getting warmer temperature and hoping the forecast is incorrect when it keeps showing cold 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 day after day after day anyway <laughs> I should have said tangent alert, but anyway, the orchids I've been showing pictures with new growths were not in my calcium nitrate video, but they fell into the same regime with what I just mentioned. I now look forward to getting most of my orchids out on the day that I have 21 degrees Celsius. Harps and angels all oh, sing the choir of joy, <laughs> even though it's overcast. But because it's overcast, you see, my orchids aren't accustomed to high light. So 21 degrees and overcast I can get them all out on the east patio table. And it's going to be a flush, flush, flush and a much needed additional flush. Now, the rest of the forecast, while the temperatures are still a little bit low and I'm not, you know, quite comfortable with it, at least they are higher than what we were dealing with up until that time and again I hope the forecast is correct because it is time to flush and I just can't wait. So this video was very specific to my conditions. Maybe none of what I talked about applies to you and your orchid growing circumstances and if that was the case and you still watch the video thank you so much. That kind of support means very very much and I greatly appreciate you for taking the time. Maybe you thought of something that would apply to your circumstances and would like some feedback on what you may have been thinking throughout the video, then please go ahead and let's talk in the comments. Different strokes for different folks and the more information we can pack into the comments section that others can benefit from, the better. Have yourself a fabulous day on one condition though, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.